We're in a message series here called Target Practice, and the title of today's message uh, is Patience, Kindness, and Goodness, Target Practice, Aim Here, uh, not, not There. Let me put an image up here on the screen. It's an image there of a target. What we're talking about uh, here for a few weeks would be the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, which is a section in the, in the Bible which talks to us about character and the character of Christ. And it will talk about the fruit of the Spirit are nine ingredients, nine flavors, if you will, of one Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit within you if you're a Christian. The Holy Spirit is God Himself, the Father, the Son, the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the invisible but very real presence of God in you and in and among the church. That's the Holy Spirit. He is our Holy Spirit helper. And one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to build your character and build my character. And listen, my friends, character is vitally important. Character is who you are when no one's looking. And character is much more important than your reputation. Character is much more important than your image. Character is who you are internally. And the fruit of the Spirit are these qualities that the Holy Spirit partners with us to build this kind of character within. Now, let me be very, very clear. You will never be able to say that you've arrived. (laughs) We are arriving. We are in process. We start, you know, we come to Christ. We are justified. We, We experience justification. We are redeemed, saved, forgiven in Christ. And then we start the process of sanctification, which is a process over time. Okay, let me read here Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, reading from the English Standard Version. But the fruit of the Spirit, fruit, internal. Uh, You know, if I were to take an apple and just tape it to an oak tree, that doesn't make that oak tree an apple tree. For a tree to produce apples, it's an apple, something within. And from within you, as you partner with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. We talked about that triad last week. Patience, kindness, goodness. That's what we're talking about today. And then next week, Lord willing, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, let's talk patience here very, very quickly. Um, There are a couple of synonyms for patience, and you'll find these words in various translations of the Bible. Um, Forbearance. In fact, if you have the New International Version of the Bible, it renders the word patience as forbearance, emphasizing, of course, the relational qualities, the relational uh, uh, emphases of the fruit of the Spirit, and also long-suffering, handling some difficult assignment over time. Okay, Um, patience is not indifferent nor passive. It's not indifference. It's not apathy. It's not standing at a distance saying, you know, I'm not going to get involved. That's uh, that's your problem. It's not my problem. You know, I see nothing. I know nothing. Uh, No, patience means you're willing to be involved. Rome wasn't built in a day. A child isn't raised and trained in a week. Uh, it's, so patience is not apathy. It's not indifference. It's partnering with God, um, being engaged. Secondly, patience deals, though, with difficult people and difficult situations over the long haul. Patience involves both forbearance, if you will, difficult people, and long-suffering difficult situations. How many of you have any difficult people in your life? Do not raise your hand. Do not look at anyone. You do. I do. We all do. Sometimes those difficult people are chronic. Sometimes it's a difficult personal situation in that moment. It lasts for a season. you got to work through it, but it's not solved just like that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 says, says it like this. Be patient with each other. He's emphasizing, if you will, the communal aspect of patience. 
Patience is not just for your inner peace. If you're going to build the kind of family that you want, it's going to take patience. If you want to be a part of a church, and by the way, you don't find good churches, you help create good churches. You want to help create a good church, you're going to have to practice patience, which means you're putting up with something much longer than you think you should. You're not going to be short-fused. Someone has said, the more you grow up, the less you blow up. And patience is one of the colors and the spectrum of love. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And then difficult, so difficult people, difficult personal situation. We forbear. And then difficult, you know, situations. James 5, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and you stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. In other words, even as a believer, you will face adverse, difficult situations. This is life. You will not be immune just because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is reality. You're going to have difficult situations that will will require long suffering. But if you belong to the Lord, (laughs) the last chapter is a good chapter. Hope has the last word. That doesn't mean everything gets remedied in this lifetime. We do not buy into the superficial Western view of Christianity that says this life is all there is. And you just sort of minimize eternity. No, You have an eternal story, and you are patient. Patience doesn't just mean, okay, I'll just grin and bear it. I'm going to grin and bear it. (laughs) I'm going to persevere with an attitude of praise, with an attitude of hope, with the kind of resilience that only a person who knows the story of Jesus Christ can have, and that's you, and you have it. And patiently, actively waits and trusts for the Lord to work his plan. Actively waits and trusts for the Lord to work his plans. In other words, I really do believe, you really do believe, what we sing when we say that we belong to the Lord, he is at work, and we believe his plans will prevail. Some of you are very familiar with uh, Theodore Geisel better known by his middle name, Dr. Seuss. And he wrote a number of memorable books with memorable characters, The Cat in the Hat, The Grinch, Horton. One of his uh, more interesting books, Oh, The Places You'll Go. The story of a little boy had a brain in his head and shoes on his feet, and he was ready to go anywhere. He had all kinds of different pathways and opportunities open to him, but whatever pathway he chose, the little boy, for certain, would end up in the waiting place. And the waiting place is really the last place anybody wants to be. You're in the waiting place. And Dr. Seuss talked about that old saying, a watched pot never boils. My wife says that all the time. You know, Ronnie, a watched pot never boils. Actually, it does. It will boil. Trust me. You put a pot of water on a stove, turn it up, it will boil. But if you watch it, you know, it's the the thing of I am obsessed over something that's not here. I am obsessed over what I do not have. And a watched pot never boils. It does, but it feels like it takes forever. My friends, waiting reminds us we're not in control. Our great God is. 
Waiting reminds us that we are not God. He is. Waiting actually might be at times a way God is preparing you for a new assignment and a new mission. And I'm about to say something to you. I'm, I'm smiling. You see it? I'm smiling. See it? Some of you think that waiting is beneath you. You're pretty arrogant and you're pretty entitled. I'm smiling. But you're arrogant and you're entitled. And let me tell you why. You're accustomed to VIP treatment. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for you. You regularly get skip the line privileges. You go, you never have to worry about whether or not you're going you're, you're to get tickets. All you need to do is make a phone call. You got tickets. You're inside the ropes. You're in the sky box. You are skipping the line. You got the best seats. You can't remember the last time you waited for anything. But in God's ecology, you'll be waiting. You are not God. And you're going to have some difficult personal relationships. You'll have to be patient and make allowances because of love. What that means is you got just like God gives you some time and space, we got to give one another some time and space, all right? And you're going to have some difficult Life assignments that will require long-suffering. Okay. The patience is good for you. The fruit of the Spirit, oh my goodness, it's the way to go. Otherwise, you're doing life on your terms and your power, and that will wear you out and wear others out around you. You'll be just full of so much unnecessary drama. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and now Kindness, kindness. As Bob Goff would say, give away kindness like you've got a hole in your pocket. Just give it away. And I want you to know that God shows the way to kindness. The book of Ephesians says this in chapter 2. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the, in, notice the action word, that he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, express, notice another action word, in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So bottom line, if we're going to be kind like God, that means we're going to treat people on the basis of grace and not just law. God expressed his kindness to us, and he was willing to treat us on the basis of grace and not just law. Kindness is love in action. It's that generous orientation of our hearts toward other people. Action, it's a disposition and an attitude. I had to make a phone call this week to... Uh, you know, consumer, uh, customer service. And uh, when I did so, I got the, you know, that uh, beginning message that we've all heard, which is uh, this call is being recorded for quality assurance. In other words, hey, some big brother in the company is listening in on this call to make sure that you're treated the way you're supposed to be treated by our representative. Gang, your conversations are being recorded for quality assurance. Our God in heaven wants us to be kind, wants us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, wants us to be kind and tenderhearted, and gracious. What that means is, you know, some of you are celebrities. You know that, don't you? You're celebrities. You say, well, I'm not, Ronnie, I'm not a celebrity. Yes, you're a celebrity maybe in your office. Maybe in your office, on your team, you're the celebrity. 
that when you say, hey, everybody, let's, let's stand. Everybody stands and they say, how high you want me to jump? Because you're a celebrity in that circle. You may, you're a really big fish, maybe in a really small pond. That's okay. But you're a celebrity there. Uh, maybe in your, in your extended family or in your school or on your team, you are a celebrity. And you cannot change and you cannot control how other people treat you. You're the boss. You're the player. You're the most popular person at the table. You're the celebrity. You can't control how other people treat you. But listen, you can't control your mindset. You can't control your attitude. You can think like a servant. There is not a one of us in this room, to quote my mom, rest her soul, you are not too big for your britches to show manners and respect and kindness. What does the book of Romans say, chapter 12? Do not be arrogant. Do not be conceited. And you be willing to associate, look in the eye, show manners, respect, even someone in a low position. And be kind to yourself, all right? What it, be, be kind to, to yourself. Um, be kind to others. And for you to uh, be able to uh, influence the atmosphere around you, it's important to be kind to yourself. That way you're operating from a platform of stability and inner harmony. What I'm saying is everybody talks to themselves. You talk to yourself. I know you do. It, just admit it. You do. You talk to yourself. You may not do it aloud. Some of you do it aloud. That's fine. Uh, but you, you, you talk to yourself. S speak kindly to yourself. Bob Onstead, one of our first elders, we started with two elders, uh, Gene Pavado, Bob Onstead. And, and Bob used to tell a story. It's not a joke. It was just a story he would tell about people's inner speaking, the way people would talk to themselves. And it was a story, uh, you know, this is all pre-cell phone stuff, of a of a guy who's driving at night, he's out in a rural area, his car breaks down, uh, what am I going to do? Oh, I see a farmhouse up there, the guy sees a farmhouse, there's a light on, and he's going to walk up and, and ask for some assistance. But as he's walking up, he starts thinking to himself, talking to himself, and says, you know, I bet that guy up there, I bet he really didn't want to help me. I'm sure he's already in bed. When I start to knock on his door, he's going to have a bad attitude about me. He may not even come to the door. And once I get there, he's probably going to let me have it for knocking on his door here late at night. And so the guy gets up to the farmhouse door, knocks on the door, and the nice farmer opens it up with a big smile on his face, and, and before he can even say, uh, how may I help you, the guy says, I don't want your help, and I don't appreciate your attitude one bit. And Bob would say, how many people, they create drama in their head, or they speak to themselves in such demeaning ways, be kind to yourself. As John Piper would say, keep preaching the gospel to you. God loves me. God cares for me. I'm, 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 I'm not all I, I, sh I should be, but I'm not all I used to be. And God's grace is going to see me through and help me through. Keep being kind to yourself. And then goodness. Patience, kindness, and goodness. And when you hear the word goodness, I mean, just, just be honest. It sounds a little dull, doesn't it? I mean, it does. Um, the word good, goodness, it's lost a little bit of its luster. Uh, I mean, you go to a restaurant, you say, hey. And somebody says, hey, how was that restaurant? And you go, eh, it, was, it was good. You mean, you mean you didn't like it? No, no, it was, it was good. 
You mean it wasn't awesome? Wasn't fantastic? I mean, when you leave today and somebody says, "Hey, how was the sermon?" and you go, uh, "This is good," they're saying, uh, "I'm not watching that online." You know, <laughs> good has lost its luster and wonder. We even have what the business book, right? We've got to go from good to great. I suggest to you that some of you, some of us, need to go from great to good. You're great at what you do, but you've not been pursuing with energy the goodness of the kind of character that honors Jesus Christ. God defines what's good. God does. We live in a society that tends to talk about right and wrong, good and evil, as if it's all just matters of taste and preference. My wife had a a birthday this past week, and also our our three-year-old granddaughter, Millie, has been staying with us for the last uh, uh, 10, 11 days. So so, uh, Wednesday morning, Martha's birthday, before I I left, I, I reminded Millie, I said, Millie, you know, remember today is Grand Martha's uh, birthday, so be, well, let's be sure and we'll sing happy birthday uh, to her. And, and she looked at me and said, well, we got to have a cake. And she looked at me and she said, Pops, we need a cake. And uh, then she said, Pops, you need to bake a cake. I said, well, that's, you know, that's, that's out of my zone right, 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 right there. No, and then she looked, she said, you know, chocolate, strawberry, uh, and so I'm looking at Martha for help, and she said, hey, you started this conversation, so, you know, don't come, come, come to me. So, uh, so I, I come to work, and I talk to my coworker, Carrie. I said, help me out here. What should I do? By the way, have you ever heard of this wonderful local business called Nothing Bunt Cakes? Yeah. You walk into Nothing Bunt Cakes, and you got like 11 different options chocolate 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 chip strawberry lemon vanilla a lot of people do values that way uh what's right what's wrong what's good what's evil Uh, you know it's like chocolate or vanilla strawberry or lemon coffee or tea regular decaf you know you have a preference i have a preference nobody's right Nobody's wrong, and this is the prevailing mindset in many circles. Listen, goodness is defined as a deliberate preference of right over wrong, a deliberate resistance of moral evil, choosing and following moral good. My friends, there is such a thing as right, there is such a thing as wrong, There there are such things as the works of the flesh. There are certain things such as the fruit of the Spirit, and God defines righteousness and unrighteousness, right and wrong, light and darkness in His holy word. Goodness. And God's good to you. Oh, He's so good to you. Pay attention to it. Good to you in creation, good to you in redemption, and uh, I don't have time to to finish this, so I'm I'm going to tie a bow on it. But I know some of you, it wears you out if there's a blank that goes unfilled. So I'm going to give you goodness and generosity are best friends, and I'll I'll come back to that at another time. But I want to remind you of this. All of us make a distinct move forward when we stop only asking God, what will you do for me? I'm not saying that's a bad question. Keep asking it. That's good. But you make a distinct move forward when you also ask, and dear Lord, 
what might you do, not just for me, but through me? And pursuing this kind of character, you win, your spouse wins, your circle of relationships win, your testimony and witness for Christ. This takes a big step forward. 